come into my laboratory, my dear. Oh, what is it, Baron Frankenstein? Look. Oh, ah, no. It's horrible. I don't want to see. Oh, you it. must. You must. Oh. Yes. People say I have a sick mind, but I've done it. Ah! I took a few bits from here and a few bits from there. I stuck them together anyhow. It's crude, but at last it's complete. It's monstrous. Ah! What are you going to call it? What else can I call it but round the horn? <laughs> Hello, welcome to the show. Now, today, as everybody knows, is Commonwealth Cenopod Day. And all over London, the bunting is up. <laughs> to, uh, to celebrate the centenary of the noble Cenopod, they're holding a goose fair in the grounds of Lambeth Palace. <laughs> and among the many attractions will be five-a-side mitre fingering, <laughs> knock a sexton out of bed, Guess the weight of a bishop, rabbi shaving in the round. <laughs> and in the evening under floodlights, our old friends, the over 80s nudist leapfrog team, <laughs> are giving a display of ballroom dancing. <laughs> and their program includes the dashing white sergeant, the blue Danube waltz, and the red hot polka. <laughs> I myself am looking forward to the finale where they all join hands in the grand chain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Smith, make the announcement. And now, a story of the fastest gun in the West and how justice was brought to the wild frontier by the man they called the Pallone Ranger. My name is Wild Alf Pubes. I'm an old panhandler. You don't have to tell us, Doctor. One day I was panhandling up the creek, crouched over my pan looking for gold. I won't find any there, are we? All right. <laughs> yes. I had staked out a claim in the Black Hills of Dakota, and uh, my daughter and I were hoping to strike it rich. Gee, poor. Shucks dug on the hide and cat on the hot tin roof. What is it, Hoss? <laughs> Paul, do you think we'll ever find gold? Oh, but of course we will. But, Paul, we've been out here prospecting for months. I'm plum tuckered out. Well, plum tuck it in. <laughs> and fix us some victuals. Look, Paul, strangers on our land. I looked up as a group of horsemen approached. The leader towered over five foot high, including the horse. I took in his sombreroed head, his leather-jacketed body, and his chapped legs. His high-heeled boots boasted ornate silver spurs. Who was this sinister stranger? He spoke. I am Buffalo Sydney Goose Creature. <laughs> the celebrated desperado who's feared and hated from Kansas City to Sacramento. <laughs> Uh, none too popular in Finchley, I might add. <laughs> and what do you want of me? I want your land. The railroad is coming through. Soon the Black Hills will reverberate with the sound of the iron horse. <laughs> and if your iron horse sets so much as an iron hoof on my land, I'll plug you more times than the BBC plug puppet on a string. <laughs> uh, don't mess with me, pubes. <laughs> the desperate men He gestured at his swarthy companions This is Mexican Solly Mutterbucket He was with the villa Pancho Villa? No, Aston Villa <laughs> Transferred to me in the close season And this is Tujin Panda Body He's a hired gun Works for anyone, don't you, Tujin? Tujin? Surely you mean two guns. No, dearie, two gins and I made his body. Oh, it's not... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, she's a fine figure of a woman, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> and who are the others? These are my cow hands. Yes. These are my cow feet. <laughs> and that's me cow eel. 
I'll give you 24 hours to get out of this territory. 24 hours? Well, to you, 23. <laughs> Adios, amigos! Adios! Oh, gee, Paul, what are we gonna do? Well, there's only one thing we can do is send for the Pallone Ranger. A streak of light, a flash of white, and a cry of... Ha, ha, Sylvia! <laughs> It's the Pallone Ranger. Whoa, Sylvia. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Pallone Ranger, and this is Sylvia, the Wonder Horse, played very quietly by Douglas Smith in, <laughs> in blinkers. <laughs> Steady, girl. <laughs> Look at her. Cats meet Monko. She looks run down. Well, we've ridden 500 miles to get here, and she's due for a service. <laughs> but we're at your command, me and my trusty Palayorno. Palomino. Well, any Palayorno is a Palomino. <laughs> and you've ridden 500 miles just to say that. A fool's errand. Tell me, tell me, Palome Ranger, why do you always wear that mask? Some say it's because I'm a wanted criminal seeking to atone for my crimes. Some say I wear it to prevent unsightly crow's feet. <laughs> but the real reason is the elastic's caught round my ears and I can't get the damn thing off. <laughs> from place to place, righting wrongs, protecting the strong, attacking the weak, <laughs> taking from the poor and giving it to the rich. Shouldn't that be the other way round? I know what side my bread's buttered, ducky. <laughs> Problem. Well, the wicked rancher, buffalo, Sydney goose creatures, trying to drive us off our land. If you can help us, I'll give you everything I have. My land, my gold, my daughter. You drive a hard bargain. <laughs> but I'll do it. I'll summon my Indian friend, squatting duck. Oi, ducky. Hello. <laughs> You're wanted. I come in answer to your bidding, oh white brother cock. <laughs> I do. He was educated abroad. <laughs> can you find Buffalo Sid Goose Creature for us? I can, a oh white brother. For have I not the nose of an eagle, the eye of an orc, the feet of a gazelle, the ears of a puma, the chest of a buffalo? Let's face it, I'm not much to look at, but I can't half go. <laughs> I can swim like the fish, climb like the mountain goat, and run like the clappers. Yes, <laughs> yes, he sees like a lynx, hears like a roeback, and smells like a badger. Follow me. All right, but at a distance. <laughs> the amazing squatting duck set off, and even though we were on horseback, we found it hard to keep up with him. He was driving an E-type. <laughs> we rode into the small town of Outlaws Creek. Aye? Outlaws Creek. Oh, only when they wear corsets. <laughs> And while we nipped in for a quick shave and hot towels, the Pallone Ranger swaggered into a bar called The Last Chance and Hearty Beast in Search of Goose Creature. It's a Pallone Ranger. Hey, what'll it be? Give me two fingers of rye, you idiot. <laughs> what a drink, not an opinion. Hello. Hello, partner. What brings you down to these parts, eh? I've got a lousy agent. <laughs> I just thought I'd have a mosey around. I'm looking for Buffalo Sid. Do you know where he is? You know Indians bend? I don't know. I've never bent one. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. That's where you'll find Buffalo Sid. He packs a 45. Never wears it. He takes a 33. <laughs> He only packs it to impress the chambermaid. I'm not afraid. I've got a 45 too. Well, to be honest, it's a double barrel 22 and a half. But I'll five o'clock shadow him to his lair and beard him in his den. The scene changes. Come with us now, dear listener, through bosky woods and fairy dell, over hills, over dales, to where the curlew cries its soft impeachment. Oh, the... get on with it. Stop having it. <laughs> Oh, all right. <laughs> Goose Creature's shack, some hours later. All right, Goose Creature, we've got the place surrounded. Are you coming out? 
Sidney's not coming out. Not till he's eaten his rice pudding. <laughs> oh, please, Mumsy, please, let's go. No, no, on, no, Mumsy, Sidney, please. no. I'm not having you playing with that Pallone Ranger. Oh, he's, he's very rough. Oh, Mum, please, let's go. Oh, Come well, on, well. Please. All right, then, Sidney. But uh, now listen to your mother. Put your Wellingtons on. Oh, yes, all right, Mum. Thanks, Mum. All right, Pallone Ranger, I've got my Wellington on. Come in. <laughs> the two fastest men in the West faced each other, their hands hovering over their hips. Not like that, Williams, not like that. <laughs> then, slowly, inexorably, they walked towards each other. All right, Polo Ranger, you draw a first. No! Draw her, I say! Oh, all right. It's ticket number 304. Well done! <laughs> Goose Creature's hand snaked to his holster, and quicker than the eye could follow, he drew his ivory handled peacemaker and fired. <laughs> but the Pallone Ranger was even faster. Oh, gosh. You've got him, Pallone Ranger. But Pallone Ranger, you're hurt. It's nothing. He's just winged me in the heart. <laughs> This is the end of the trail, old buddy, old pal. But we'll meet again in that great corral in the sky. If not, my place for drink is at six. <laughs> and that was the end of the Pallone Ranger. Clutching the hole where he'd been plugged, he ran round... <laughs> he ran round in ever-diminishing circles. <laughs> and... And with a final gurgle, disappeared down his own plug hole. <laughs> they took him to Boot Hill, and on his tombstone, they inscribed this awful warning. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Fraser Hayes Fox. <laughs> Supplement. News from the fashion front. At a recent gala film opening, Twiggy wore a topless dress. Asked for her comment, she said... I was mortified. Nobody noticed. <laughs> and at the same affair, there was an unfortunate mishap. Dusty Springfield's eyelashes fell off and stabbed Sandy Shaw in the foot. <laughs> 
And now over to trendy Sunday night TV personality, Seamus Android. Well, now, all right. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight I've got someone rather special who I know you'd like to. So without further ado, <laughs> I'd like you to give her a big warm because I know she'd appreciate it. And, <laughs> and I'd like to add, but I can't. <laughs> or subtract or divide, and <laughs> I'm not very good at reading either. But I have a warm spot, and it gives me a great thrill. <laughs> but that's none of your business. And <laughs> with that, good night. Every Sunday evening, I think to myself, Seamus Android should be living at this hour. <laughs> or at least awake, anyhow. <laughs> now, this week, the colour supplement turns its bleary eye on the subject of the BBC. Now, what is the BBC? Well, it's something you turn to when you're faced with the cold, grey reality of David Frost on commercial, only to find that he's beaten you to it and he's there on BBC as well. <laughs> and then there's BBC Radio, the elephant's graveyard of entertainment. Well, to be fair, the BBC are always searching for new talent. Take the uh, script department. You see, our new, our new script writer, Mr... Uh, uh, Grant, Grant Patek, J. He's an old Grant Patek. Yes. Well, well, well. Yes. <laughs> welcome. Uh, welcome aboard. Nice. Now, I've been looking at some of these scripts you've sent in, and... Uh, <laughs> well, I know you're new at it, but there are limits. I mean, I... look at the synopsis you sent in for the Dales. The incident you envisage in the bathroom between Mrs. Dale, Bomber Harris, and Dr. Adam York concerning the loofah, the mirror on a stick, and the inflatable rubber duck. <laughs> uh, whilst it's not without its dramatic highlights, it would, I should think, be extremely dangerous to all concerned. No, 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 not at all. I tried it out. I tried it out. Uh, the loofah snapped, but uh, the, the rubber duck come through it unscathed. <laughs> Yes. Well, what, what about this scene? You, you can't have Mrs. Dale and Mrs. Freeman crouched on a bombsite swigging myths. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's the trouble with you lot. You're stuffy and you're hidebound. You don't want the fresh, clean wind of reality blowing up your corridors of power. <laughs> But look at this dialogue. Oh, wait, let, let me read it to you. You'll get the full flavour of it then. Uh, enter Mrs. Dale in her flimsy night attire. Her bronzed young... Yes, yes, quite, quite. We can uh, skip the stage direction. Mrs. Dale speaks. Why, hello, Jim. Call stone me. <laughs> <laughs> what a booze-up we had last <laughs> Up the BMA. Oh, my mouth's like the bottom of a parrot's cage. <laughs> to, which, to which her better half, the doctor, replies, Shut up, you silly old tart. <laughs> or I'll give you a mouthful of knuckles. <laughs> now, what's wrong with that? It hasn't quite got the nuance we expect. Just oh, won't do, Mr. Gunfather. I... Your work is obviously the product of a one-trap degenerate childish mind. I suppose that means you're giving me the sack. Oh, good heavens, no. You're just the chap we want to write to the horn. Oh! Well, a lot of people think of the BBC as a heartless institution staffed by automatons. And a lot of people are right. But uh, love can still blossom even in such an unlikely place as the sound effects department. Charles, am I disturbing you? No, I'm just trying out a few sound effects for midweek theatre. Don't, don't let me interrupt, but Charles, I had to see you. Well, close then, and over here. <laughs> now, what's the matter, darling? Roger knows everything. Everything? About us. He had us watched by a detective. <clears throat> he signed an affidavit to the effect that he's seen us <clears throat> on four separate occasions and in the grill room of the Ritz. Come, my dear, don't <clears throat> yourself. It'll, it'll ruin your makeup. Here, let me take you in my. <clears throat> and kiss you on this. <clears throat> Dry your on my. 
am I being a foolish little... Charles, I just want to know that you still... me and that you'll always... me, even when I'm old and... <laughs> yes, I'll always... you... as long as there's a... in my body. <laughs> Life will be one long... <laughs> and together, we'll find a little peace. Ah, oh, yeah, it makes you feel absolutely... <laughs> well, it does me, but then I'm just a sentimental old... <laughs> And talking of... Uh, <laughs> here's rambling Sid Rumbo. <laughs> the, um... <laughs> the folk singer who is no longer and no shorter than he was last week. <laughs> He's about the same length in his stocking moolies. Now, well, good evening, rambling Sid. Oh, hello, my dearie for <laughs> I'll wordle titwillow and jump Jim Crow. Yes, uh, <laughs> Yes, you do that, they can always edit it out of the recording. Now, <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you going to sing us? Uh, it is an air that I should be doing on my new LP, but, of course, there I shall be accompanied by the Loomer Fairfax Spondling Chorale. <laughs> Unfortunately, they can't be with me today, so if you and the boys and girls would join me... We'd, uh, we'd like to. Thank yeah. you very much. We shall all burst forth together, so grundle your parts, and away we go. Mm -hmm. I'll sing you one, oh, green grows my boglin fork. What is your one, oh? One's the grunge upon my blood, masking my cord wangle. <laughs> Two, oh, green grows my boglin fork. What are your two, oh? Two are my looming from See how they gangle. One's the grunge upon my blood, masking my cord wang. <laughs> I'll sing you three, oh, green grows my boglin fork. What are your three, oh? Three are the times I've lunged my groats. <laughs> Two are my looming from See how they gangle One's the grunge upon my blood Masking my cord wang I'll sing you for a Green grows my bowling fork What are your four? Off my wordless bent Oh, three are the times I've lunged my groats Two are my looming from See how they gangle One's the grunge upon my blood Masking my cord wang I'll sing you Green grows my boat in four. <laughs> Five of the wogglers at my spong for my <laughs> Three are the times I've lunged my groats. Two are my dooming from see how they gangle. One is the grunge upon my slot. It's ruined my cord wag. <laughs> better out than in. <laughs> now, uh, to be serious, serious for a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we in the entertainment business have every cause to be grateful to the backroom boys of the BBC, especially those unsung heroes of the wardrobe and makeup department. <laughs> and uh, recently, I was appearing on BBC television, and before I went on, I popped into the wardrobe department. Hello, anybody there? Oh, hello, I'm Julian, and this is my friend Sandy. Yes, sure. <laughs> Yes, you see, look, it's crocheted on our smocks. <laughs> the actual name, you see. Are you one of the Daleks from Doctor Who? Oh, oh, no, it's Mr. Hall, uh -huh. isn't it? Yeah. So sorry, nice to bow, dearie. Thank you very much, dear. Come for a fitting, have you? Yes, I've been sent up by the producer. I'm not surprised, I'm... <laughs> Oh, he's got an acid tongue, is that Ned? Can you say that again? Oh, mm. he's got an acid tongue, Ned. Oh, he did. <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, and where was I? Yes, what show? 
<laughs> Get out of way there. What show are you doing, Mr Horn? You come for Sweevy La Piste? Well, not for <laughs> No, but if you've got the kettle on, I don't... Uh... Oh, he's bold! bold. <laughs> and cheeky with it. Yes! Yeah. What, uh, what sort of programme are you doing then, Mr Well, Lord? it's an interview programme. You're not on Oh Me Alive. Oh, of course he's not. He's much more your Vada of the Week, aren't you, Mr Hall? Well, to be honest, you know, I'm not quite sure. They just said report to Studio 6. Well, let's see what's on the schedule. Look up your call sheet, Jewel. Eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a Vada. Well, he's not a black and white minstrel. And he's not one of your likely lads. No. <laughs> quite the reverse. <laughs> Most unlikely. Most. <laughs> He wouldn't be on Varda with Mother. No, he's he? more your Varda with Granny. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! What if he's the BBC Two? What cosy did they say? Well, <laughs> cosy. Uh, cos two. Oh yes, yes, yes. They, they said a dinner two. suit. Oh, sorry, Ducky. Dinner suit's out. So that's out. Out? Yes, the Director General's wearing it. Yes. <laughs> and I hope he don't put his hand in the trouser pocket. Why? Oh. Channing Pollock had it on last. Oh. <laughs> yes, you know that one that produces the doves from the most unlikely place. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait a minute, Ma. Do you mean the BBC has only got one dinner jacket? Yes, it's part of the economy drive. They all wear it. Eric Robinson, Ronnie Corbett. Not at the same time, of course. I don't know, though. You can't tell. <laughs> Ronnie could be in there somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Usually is. <laughs> Anyway, it's out. No, most of our stuff's out. Uh, let's look up through the wardrobe and see if we can find you some bonus. Yeah, yeah. What about this? What about this very sheesh? Oh, yes. Only been worn once. By Cathy Kirby. You've got much the same measurement. Much. <laughs> Distributed differently, yeah. of course. Uh, I think not. Well, it's either that or this outfit, as worn by Jimmy Savile. And of the two, I'd rather have Cathy Kirby's. Yes. Well, now you'll want your baubles to baubles, go with it. Yes. You see, your and this wig. Your wig. You see, a few jobs of makeup there. Yes, oh, look a picture, oh, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, oh. of the sort you buy in Tangier. Mm. Well, um, <laughs> it's too late to do anything about it. Yes, well, off you troll then. Bona la. Bona, bona, bona. Don't worry, you'll be fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, did he say Studio 6? Yes, why? Well, we'll certainly make an impression on the viewers. Why? He's reading the epilogue. <laughs> and I think I'm the only man who read the epilogue in gold lame and a henna rinsed wig. <laughs> Cheerio, see you next week. the Horn, starring Kenneth Horn with Kenneth Williams, Hugh Paddock, Betty Marsden and Bill Pertwee. On the musical side, you heard the Fraser Hayes Four and Edwin Braden and the Hornblowers. Special effects by Ken Gregory and Andrew Cartridge. The script was written by Barry Chalk and Marty Feldman, and the programme is produced by John Simmons. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.